Welcome to the 3D Print Entrepreneur Podcast hosted by Print That Thing, where we help you become a 3D print designer. I'm your host, Jay Wall, and today's episode, we're going to be talking to Vicky Soma, aka Tiga, and she is a very talented designer, programmer, the author of Blender 3D Printing Book that taught me a number of things about Blender. So I'm super excited to have her on the show today. We had a great chat about her 500th Etsy sale, and she shared some really great insight for anyone out there looking to sell their designs in a product market space. Before we dive into the interview, let's get a quick word from our sponsors. This episode is brought to you by Print That Thing, an educational platform that helps you become a 3D print designer within 30 days. We provide easy to digest lessons that compound so you can learn fast. Sure, you can learn 3D print design on YouTube, but we teach a unique and flexible workflow not found anywhere else. You'll learn by doing while creating 10 unique designs, giving you a strong foundation to get you 3D printing your own ideas. If you want to unleash your superpower of 3D print design, become a member at PTT.live for designs courses and community welcome everybody today we have a very 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 special guest this is one of my good friends vicky aka tiga she is a 3d print designer a coder mother uh, entrepreneur all kinds of things a writer she does all kinds of things she actually taught me a lot of blender uh welcome vicky thanks for coming and joining us oh thank you hello everybody yeah so tell us this is uh kind of people who are just kind of meeting you for the first time kind of what you do or kind of how you got in kind of started in the 3D print world. Okay. <laughs> um, so in my day job, I'm a computer programmer. I work with food safety labs that are testing for salmonella and E. coli. And also some of them have converted over to test for COVID during this oh, time. Oh, interesting. Uh, so that's what I do during my day job. And I first got involved with 3D printing around 2014. I still had a uh, human... Um, Jason mentioned that I'm a mother, so that my youngest son was still like an infant at the, that time, and I uh, wanted to make myself a necklace, and I ended up teaching myself 3D modeling to make that necklace, ah. and um, uh, I didn't have a 3D printer at the time, so I used a company called Shapeways, and it took me three months to like <laughs> poke my way through Blender and overthink things uh, before I finally uploaded it to Shapeways. And it's something now I look back; it's something I could do in five minutes. Right. I have it like it's just like a little. A little yeah. breastfeeding logo. You oh, know, that's awesome! I, I could just do it so fast now. Um, and then maybe about a week later, I received that product from Shapeways. I opened that box and like what was in my head and then like on my computer was in my hand. And so instantly I was hooked. Wow. And so for, I guess, about a year, I was just uh, ferociously designing and sending things to Shapeways. So it was a lot of jewelry product projects or mm -hmm. custom um, like wine stoppers for my mom's retirement. Yeah, you know, I that saw kind one of those. There's a little bus. I saw one of those. Yes, something. Yeah, yes. yeah, yeah, yeah. So <laughs> I still like that's one of my oldest designs designs and I still routinely have to print it around actually around this time of the year because Perfect. that's when new bus driver friends are retiring <laughs> and so they all get a little a wine stopper <laughs> that's um, cool yeah and then uh I ended up entering a Instructables contest during that time oh, I didn't for know about a that. Christmas ornament and uh really uh, I didn't think I had any kind of um, chances at it, but I was really just sort of trying to impress my husband. He liked the <laughs> Library of Congress, so I made an ornament based off of the Library of Congress, and then it, it won the contest, Woo! and then... I got to really impress my husband by taking yeah. him on an epic date to the White House. So that was <laughs> wow, kind of fun. Yeah. Wow, that's a great story. Yeah. So <laughs> at that point in time, I really, you know, I thought I loved 3D printing. Mm -hmm. And then my family surprised me with a real, like a, a desktop 3D printer for my birthday um, in 2015. And at the time, <laughs> now I thought you're really was, hooked. <laughs> yeah, I thought I thought it was going to be a step down because I was used to these, you know, industrial high resolution oh, printers yeah, yeah, that yeah. you didn't have to worry worry about supports mm -hmm. or anything like that. They come and out looking awesome and amazing. Yes, yeah. Right. So I thought this was going to be a step down, but it absolutely wasn't because I, it's very hackable, you mm -hmm. know, and then I started exploring with, you know, color changes and embedding uh, mirrors and oh, you know, like yes. aluminum into my designs. And so, yeah, I just really, that's when 
I really, really got indicted when I had my own own printers. And also it was very fast prototyping. You know, right. like you can print something and be like, oh, that sucks. Yeah. You know, you didn't have to wait a week and you didn't have to spend the money on Shapeways yep. to, you know, find out something. Something cool. was not going to work. If you're going to fail, fail fast. Yeah, yeah, that's what I've been saying lately too. Fail fast, fail fast, yeah. pivot. And that's what it's all about. Rapid prototyping with everything almost that we do. That's mm-hmm. cool. So that's, I think that's really interesting because like, you started off like printing on demand, like printing, having things printed and brought to you. Like I would have, mm-hmm. I would have been so scared to go that route in the beginning. So it's cool to like hear someone come from that angle. Yeah. That but, might be a lot of my overthinking, you know, like before I'd sent a print to Shapeways, I would oh check it and recheck yes, it and they so have their own times. checks. Right. And then you got to get through their hoops. That's what I remember trying to get through the Shapeways hoops. Like what, why is it still broken? What is still broken? <laughs> Um, yeah. Well, what is your favorite thing? Like now that you're in the 3D print community, she does all kinds of stuff. YouTube, she, you, you do festivals and events and things like this. Like, tell us a little bit about that. What you, what just okay. happened? Um, so I live in a little town called Occoquan. It's mm-hmm. outside of Washington, D.C. And for 50 years, they've had this craft show in the town. And I used to go to it a lot as a little girl. <laughs> and I just never expected that I would have any kind of thing that I could have a table there at the at the craft show but all of a sudden I had this 3d printer and you know I wanted to kind of introduce more people to Mm -hmm. 3d printing and a way to do that is just set up a booth at the craft fair and so you know just started doing like little ornaments and Mm -hmm. posters and um buildings in my town so I actually oh that's a great idea oh wow a gazebo this you know like this was um, or did you paint it no it's multicolored oh cool but my very first craft show is all white because okay, I hadn't okay. gone to that right. point you hadn't yet. Gone to that level. <laughs> um, so when I designed this for my very first craft show, you know, I thought, oh, it's just going to be people in the town, like the town council right. or like volunteers that are going to buy this. But um, it turns out uh, a lot of people get married or engaged uh, in gazebos, and yeah. it has anything that has to do with it's weddings or engagements. To them. Oh. Yeah, it has a very emotional oh. thing. So I. I sell a lot of these on Etsy's. I've um, adapted them to cake toppers. Uh, there's Whoa. one was on the like, cake in Canada <laughs> and um, yeah. And then do just customizations, you know, like sometimes engraving the name or uh, so sometimes cool. altering the gazebo right. a little bit to look like a special gazebo, but yeah. Customization. So, so did, were you, so I love that you're just like such a, you're so crafty and just creative, but you're also an entrepreneur. Like, did you grow up that way? Like, were you always kind of an entrepreneur or did it kind of come about with 3D printing or like were your parents? I guess it just came with the the, the entrepreneur stuff probably uh came with the 3D printing, I suppose. So you weren't selling any like anything else like beforehand, like or making little things to sell or anything. It was good. I was making a lot of things uh, profusely, but never selling them. Like I would do a lot of a plastic canvas or crochet. Mm. So even to this day, like I'll still crochet baby blankets. And, you know, like back back in the day, I used to, you know, like make actually Christmas ornaments, like stitching them. And then you Mm -hmm. give them to people for Christmas. So, Mm. um, and the design process that I go through for those and, you know, the, the 3d printing all starts off very similarly where I'm doing a lot of sketching and drawing mm-hmm. and everything like that. Yeah. Are you, did you draw when you were a little kid? Like we were a drawer or yeah, a sketcher? Yeah, okay, do- yeah. I'm still a doodler. doodler a a drawer. Drawer. Yeah. <laughs> That's great. Um, I guess what, now that you're in 3d, the printing community, essentially, what do you, what is your favorite thing about the the community <laughs> or the industry in general? Well, I would say, you know, in the pandemic, uh-huh. I have learned, you know, just how much I really appreciate the community. And, um, you know, one of the the many things that I, I do, I'm on the board of the East Coast Rip Rap Festival. Yeah. And that's one thing where we're celebrating community. And we are virtual this year. Um, but you still, I don't know, just still interacting with everybody. Yeah, I, and- just in the Discord with y'all. I mean, it was amazing how many people were in the Discord, like always chatting at all times. Sorry to interrupt. But yeah, yeah. Oh, it was no, just no, amazing. Not at all. Yeah. Good job to you. Um, yeah. So I would say definitely the community and during this time, uh, you know, I'm helping my kids with virtual school and I'm doing my day job, which hasn't mm-hmm. slowed down at all in the pandemic. Mm-hmm. And so I, I hadn't been doing as much creating or making it at all uh, as, as much, I would say. Mm-hmm. Um, but um, 
the, you know, I had collected through the years, like different t-shirts, you know, like I have mm-hmm. a 3d printing nerd t-shirt yeah, from back yeah, yeah, in the yeah. day when, when Joel, like I started subscribed to him when he only had 300 oh, subscribers. Wow. Early. Ad- yeah. yeah. You saw, yeah that's great. <laughs> So I have like, you know, 3D printing nerd shirts. I have a lot of shirts designed by Lauren from A Buzz Designs, uh-huh. you know. And um, you know, I found during the pandemic when I wear those shirts, you know, even though we're socially distanced, I, I still feel connected to the community. I That's feel beautiful. connected to my more creative, you know, the more a productive self back in the earlier age days. That's beautiful. <laughs> That's great. Yeah. What are you who like what are your favorite types of artists or where do you find inspiration or how do you find ideas kind of like that that's kind of two questions in one so if you <laughs> do they yeah, just I, come to you or like yes a lot of times will come from um you know like my loved ones like the mm-hmm. school bus uh wine stopper would be from my mom mm-hmm. uh, sometimes i design things for myself like i had done a little dna necklace that with hearts that it was I like for that. me i saw that yeah. right right and um but I would say a lot of times, like designing for my husband tends to have like the best sellers. Like I have bow ties that I've done for gotcha. him or um, uh, uh, Cthulhu. I saw airplane. that, the airplane. Yeah, yeah I love the, that. little That's airplane so holder, good. you know. So think, this is something that me and my, I think he was seven at the time. We teamed up together to to design this. I mean, I did all the the modeling, the but he lifting. would say like, "So what did you like, model hey, in? Put, in, put so in a cool. butt crack." Yeah, we got to put the butt crack in. That's so yeah. cool. So was that in made in Blender? That's got a really cool yeah. vibe yeah, that's, look to it. That's oh, cool. thank you. Yeah, so it's um sub division. Yeah, that's surface sub-surf, modifier. Subserve. Yeah, and <laughs> yeah. Vicky, she does she, one of the things I thought was really cool. She was in our workshop and uh she did a pottery. We do a pottery lesson like the the line and she took her her son, it was your son, I think, wasn't it? Yeah, yeah. Took your son's profile and made the outline of his face the like the shape of the the vase. It was so I've never seen anyone do that. It was just super creative. So <laughs> good hats off to you. Oh, thanks. I think that, you know, I I got that inspiration from a Shapeways designer. They had done rings like that. Ah, Hey, yeah. yeah. Well, art inspires art. That's what I always say. Yeah. (laughs) Um, What advice? So I want to talk to you. I know you just had your 500th sale on uh, Etsy and she's been printing on demand uh, virtual or I guess in person and digital. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So congrats on that. But I wanted to talk on. any advice for someone who's setting up an Etsy shop? Like what would you recommend someone just starting out the gate? What was something you wish somebody would have told you when you were starting out maybe? Okay. I think I have a few things there. I I think you're going to hear a lot to, you know, when you're setting up your Etsy um, listings to go ahead and make sure to take, you get like 13 tags, make sure to take Mm -hmm. advantage of all those taggings. Okay. Um, And, you know, um, a lot of times uh, if I'm, sketchy or design to citing if I want to do put my time you know mm-hmm. I'm, I'm working mother do I want yeah, to dedicate yeah. the time into a specific model I do check to see if there's other things like that out there market because, research you know, yeah like, <laughs> yeah totally if someone has something out there it may not necessarily be worth my time or right whatnot. or you can make um, it even cooler with your flair and your creativity yeah, that's true. <laughs> or, you know, looking for a Cthulhu airplane holder, yeah. so, you know. Oh, I'll just make one. <laughs> yeah. Um, I would say also when you start your shop, um, don't get discouraged until you get through a holiday season. Oh, that quarter four advice. is where I see the most of my activity. Uh-huh. So, you know, like if you set up your shop in January, <laughs> you might feel a little bummed out, but just wait, just wait okay. until September. Be patient. <laughs> yeah. And then one thing I learned, which is, um, you know, you always hear about cyber week. Mm-hmm. And so I was always, you know, like cr- doing crunch time of getting my listings and all my photos done uh-huh. and trying to get it done before cyber week. And what I wish I do before is people start really shopping well before cyber week. Uh, okay, so, good to you know, know, like I start to see my sales even uh, go up in September, you know, okay. but definitely have your listings up by Ready. the beginning of November gotcha, um, to, gotcha. to definitely, to definitely have that. Um, That's great another, advice. <laughs> yeah. Another thing I didn't quite take advantage of at first is um, Etsy. Uh, you get the sale. They already mm-hmm. have the customer's address and they have um, relationships with the shippers, including the U.S. Postal Service. Oh. And you can print labels from Etsy. Oh, uh, shipping great. labels. And I wasn't doing that at first. So I was like handwriting oh, the labels, oh gosh, which is yeah. actual a lot of time. Mm-hmm. And it just turns out to be just 
so much better if you just use it and they also save you money right and you know just um and now i even have like a little label printer so i you know like print it and i don't even have to cut it out and duct tape it to the thing <laughs> heck yeah so what so what so you're you are printing like if someone like an order comes in you go into your office or in your printer space and then print that yourself right you're not are you sending it out to anyone else or do you do it all um, in house and then ship i still it? have some jewelry pieces that i will pr- order Outsource. from shapeways yeah, and yeah. brain brain in cool. um but most everything i i do here mm-hmm. and then for my peace of mind and my sanity yeah. i like to already have it pre-printed i already oh, like that's have you like know, a things, batch yeah already like sitting sitting out like mm-hmm. uh, i think for this this year uh blue-footed boobies you know like before mm-hmm before the holiday season, I made sure to print about 40 blue footed booby ornaments. Got to get ready. Um, that's get, smart. That's yeah, right. Cause so, I was thinking like every print would be like, Oh no, I got to go run out there and do it. But yeah, that's, that's very clever. But there's, um, you know, there's things I have, um, Samoya dog ornaments that people like to personalize mm-hmm. because that's one thing you can do with 3d printing. Is hey, customize customization. And so they'll want their dog's <laughs> dog's name. So those I do, do have to print on demand. Gotcha. And so, but uh, everything, that I can already have done mm-hmm. and assembled. I like to do that just so all I have to do worry about during yeah. Christmas, especially this Christmas, is to you know ship it. Right. That's kind. I think that's what I'm kind of scared because I really want to do print on demand, and I've got a few. I'm working on a few products, but like I'm also scared of like that shipping, like doing all that extra. Like sh- I don't know. It sounds very daunting and scary to me. But I guess you just got to do it, right? You just got to jump <laughs> in. Oh, the shipping part? No, not the shipping part, but oh. like getting it all ready, oh. like packaging, make sure it's printing. I don't know. I always feel like my printers are printing all amazing until I'm about to. to do and then something. I'm like, yeah. oh, why isn't it working? And I'll be like stressed about like, no, it's not printing. But I like the idea that you said about having batches. And yeah. I was thinking just when you said that, it could be good for like uh, scarcity, you know, like there's only five, you know, quantity wise, oh, you know, yes. that could help too. Oh yeah, I do. I do see that a lot. Like I'll go and spy on my shop in a different yeah. browser that, you know, I'm not logged in as me and they'll be like, there's only one left and it's in five people's carts, you know? So right. You're like, Oh, what? I got to get it. I got to get it. That's cool. <laughs> so are you, would you say like, do you send a lot of traffic to Etsy or do you think, do you think it feels like a lot of orders I, come from like their organic kind of search thing? I think it's coming from Etsy. Their, their <laughs> I think stuff. most okay. of it is. Yeah. Uh, sometimes I see in Etsy search results where sp- someone specifically searching for me. You, right. But I think I think I just ride the coattails of their marketing. Ah. Um, especially this year, I think that they did a marketing push because um, I, I ended up having my best year ever well, during hey, the congrats. pandemic. Woo, and I think a lot of it was their advertising that they had done. Gotcha. That's cool. What do you think in like moving forward this year or next year, do you think you'll keep making more designs for like print on demand type projects? Uh, oh, you like got a lot. I was looking at your, you have many, many, like 30, pl- I mean, lots of designs on your, on your store. Yeah. Like you and got, actually I have heard that if you have 50 or more listings, it helps you with their, uh, their search. You um, get like into it. That's really the, yeah, that's the, that's the behind the scenes, ladies and gentlemen. Yeah. <laughs> Another behind the scenes is they had um, they had changed maybe about a year year mm-hmm. eighteen months ago, where they just sent out an email that their market research had shown that if you have free shipping, people are more likely to buy. So they uh, were encouraging everybody to go to free shipping and uh, you, you know, like do would, free shipping. You just kind of I do the free it. shipping. Okay, but just, what I, yeah. I didn't, yeah, just up, updated up, all my prices. Yeah, up the price a little bit. <laughs> I love that you're you're printing kind of smaller things too. I feel like if you're listening to this, I feel like maybe starting out, that might be a good thing. Would you recommend starting with smaller designs? You know, what I would say Mm -hmm. is um, focus on what is your passion. And Mm. if what if what your vision is something big, then, you know, like work on something big. If it's, you know, like little small things and small uh, things that's but great i love small that. things print faster yeah, and they're probably, easy yeah. to ship yeah and yeah lower <laughs> like a bubble mailer <laughs> right it's a good starting out that's great um well where can people find you like what's the best way for them to find your shop and kind of look around and buy some stuff or anything like that okay yeah so on um, my etsy shop would be etsy.com slash uh forward slash shop uh, forward slash Vicky Tegaw, T-G-A-W. Vicky yeah. T-G-A-W. And what is the, like Tegaw? So I, that's what I just call you. Like when I'm talking to Amber, I'm like, I'm going to talk to Tegaw. What does Tegaw mean or stand for? Um, 
When I was really young, I had a pen pal, which was my cousin, and he liked to call himself the great and best. Yeah. And so I wanted to be cool like him. So I was Vicky, the great and wonderful. Oh, cool. Uh, but, you know, like your handwriting and you just go to abbreviation. So he was T Gab and I was T Gaw. Oh, that's beautiful. Yeah. I never do that. That's great. Yeah. That's so cool. Well, I want, oh, go ahead. Always, always very easy. You know, like when you're doing a new Twitter handle or new social media comes up, it's usually not taken. So yeah, yeah. I like that. I like that too. That's just, it's short. Um, the last thing I want to do is play a game with you. Oh yeah. <laughs> yeah. So this is just word association. I'm just going to throw out some words and then they're all 3d print related. Um, and you can also pass, um, <laughs> uh, PLA or TPU. I would say PLA. Oh, okay. FDM or SLA. Oh no. <laughs> <laughs> my first love was the SLA or the, oh no, my first love was SLS. So I'm going to go with FDM. FDM. Okay. Yeah. 3D scan or 3D model? 3D model. Supports or no supports? No supports. <laughs> STL or OBJ? STL. Precision modeling or sculpting? Ooh, precision modeling. Uh, Prusa slicer or Cura slicer? Uh-oh. What about other? Simplify 3D? <laughs> or, or Simplify 3D. That's I, I still use, use Simplify yeah, 3D. Yeah, I do yeah. too. I use a bunch, but yeah, Simplify 3D, it's just like I'm used to it. I know what you mean. Uh, My Mini Factory or Colts 3D? Ooh. Or another I one. I think I actually have a login for Colts 3D, so I okay, better okay. do that one. <laughs> um, practical design or decorative design? Ooh, decorative. Ooh. Digital download or print on demand? Digital download. Ooh, yeah. Sell a product or take on a client? Hmm. I'll sell a product. I think. Okay. Okay. Yeah, yeah I would too. Uh, well, that's right. That's all I have for you today. All right. Vicky, yeah. Well, um, did you have any question for me or is there? Um, no, anything? but I do want to thank you for keeping the circle of knowledge going. Yeah. You know, like uh, I, you, you taught me so much in the new blender that I, that I use now. So but yeah, keep going. There's so much that they're updating it all the time. It's crazy. It's insane. Yeah. Yeah, now I'm at, also uh, dabbling in the Python a bit too. Oh, good. Oh, cool. I need to learn that still. That's uh, uh, um, also check out the add primitive tool. If you haven't seen it yet, okay. it's very cool. And extrude manifold. Okay. All right. Later, Vicky. Thanks again Bye. for talking. <laughs> Peace. Thank you all so much for listening with us today. And again, thanks to Vicky for joining us on this episode. Be sure to check out her Etsy store. She is TGaw3D for anyone looking to help her get her next sales goal. Be sure to check in next week. We'll be talking to Willie from CoCreate.com, a brilliant California-based company that has been 3D scanning and printing miniatures of people for almost a decade. While you wait for the next episode, remember to get yourself a Print That Thing membership over at ptt.live so you can start 3D printing your own ideas. I'm Jay Wall, and as always, keep creating.